Good. Hello, folks. Uh, Professor John here. Welcome back to uh, BUS uh, 440. I want to recap uh, a key lecture that I presented on total quality management. I got in most of what I wanted to get in. Uh, I'm going to do post of videos on Six Sigma, but I want to finish our discussion on um, TQM, total quality management. It's a review, but then I have some additional information that I want to present to you. Now, also understand that uh, I'm going to paste, post a modified uh, syllabus, and so we'll end the class uh, orderly. You'll do a couple of, uh, two more uh, case studies, large case studies. Uh, you'll submit those for credit, and I'll talk more about that uh, when I post the syllabus. But I want to get to this lecture. I want to talk about change. Uh, we've talked about it in class. What causes a change in organizations? Why would organizations want to change their culture, change the way they do things? Well, change is something that we have to give a great deal of thought to. Change for the sake of change is not a good idea. Change for a purpose makes a lot of sense. <clears throat> and so, what are some of the reasons for change? Well, some of the most important reasons for change are because our customers tell us they ha we have to change. We have to change the way that we do business. We have to change the way that we interact with them. Customers, they will stop and tell you what the problem is. Well, most customers are your friend. Most customers, when they have a bad experience, they just leave. And this is true if we have a, uh, a business to business uh, type organization or if we're a business to consumer type organization. It doesn't make any difference. Stay close to your customers. Stay very, very close to your customers. They'll tell you what you need to do. Now, uh, we can be forced into making changes because our competition is forcing us to change. And I cited you the example of a client of mine that manufactured windows and patio doors. And that got into our discussion, a very important discussion on not only quality, but value added, value added. And so you ask your customers, what can we do for you? What can we do to enhance your position? to help you achieve better profitability. And as you know, uh, the customers were uh, stores that were selling, building products directly to consumers. And those stores came back and said, well, we have a real problem with inventory. As you can see, we have a huge inventory, uh, a huge stock room full of inventory. We have a lot of inventory on the floor. And can you help us better manage our inventory, especially from your company. Absolutely right, we can do that. And after discussion, we designed a little something called just-in-time delivery. Now, you know how just-in-time delivery works. We discussed it in class. It was value-added. It gave us a competitive advantage. Now, what I also said in class is that when we ask the question, how can we gain a competitive advantage? That's the wrong question. The question the organization should be asking is, how can we create value added with our customers? Create value added, in this case, instituting just-in-time delivery. When we instituted just-in-time delivery with the organization's customers, that created a competitive advantage. That shot revenue right up. And it forced our competitors to do the same thing. I mean, those uh, stores that uh, were selling uh, uh, remodeling and uh, doors, windows, woods of various kinds to consumers, like Home Depot, for example, they looked at it and said, well, you know, if you can do, if this company can do just-in-time delivery, why can't you? 
Uh, and so uh, that, that pressured our competitors to make changes. Uh, we established value added, it gave us a competitive advantage, and it really forced the competition to change as well. And that's what uh, Just In Time will do. So we looked at value added, and we looked at some of the other reasons uh, why organizations will change their culture. And we know that a CEO will come in with a, new, uh, with, with, with a new plan, a new strategic initiative, a new mission even. And in that particular case, we cited a uh, company, I used 3M as, as an example, where uh, the president, the new president of, CM, of, of 3M came in and instituted a tremendous cultural change, and that was, of course, Six Sigma. We find that in order to survive as an organization, we have to do a better job satisfying the needs and wants of our customers. How do we do that? Well, the idea is to be ahead of the curve, not wait till revenue falls, to be ahead of the curve, to stay close to our customers. How can we better serve them better? What can we do to help them become more profitable? And, and by the way, incur, in, in, uh, increase our profitability as well. What can we do? What can we do for them? If you ask, they'll tell you. Now, it may not be realistic, it may not be reasonable, but maybe we can reach an accommodation. Their needs and wants are changing. We need to be at a place in time where we're ready to accommodate their needs and wants. It's important to our sales force to stay close to customers. It's important for them to tell us how the needs and wants of our customers are changing. Change in an organization is a result of a couple of factors, key factors. One is a competition. Uh, 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 a second is because our customers tell us we have to change. Then also because a new management team comes in, they have a new mission, new strategy, a new regime. But I want to talk to you about number three. And that is, and we discussed this before, so this is, this is somewhat of a review. Number three talks about, and I'm gonna move over to the board so I can point. Number three talks about changing structure and changing people. We talked about how to change uh, structure, and we know the best way to change structure is uh, the benchmark. One more. It's a benchmark. We're always searching for best practices. We're looking at how can we, how do we find out? How, how can we find out how other people are doing this? What are other organizations doing? What are other companies doing? What are other nonprofits doing? We exchange information, they come. Everybody's looking for best practices. Where do we find best practices? Well, we go out into uh, the market and we look for best practices. Periodicals are helpful, conferences are helpful, but interacting with other companies, you know, it uh, could be that uh, you know, we're not interested in getting information from our competition, they don't want to share, but there's other organizations out there that are doing, maybe not in our same, uh, our, our same area, our same field, our same market, but they have a different market and they face some of the other problems and we exchange information. And then they have information that they're looking for from us, a problem they're trying to solve that maybe we've already solved. So we do a lot of benchmarking, which is looking for best practices, always looking for best practices. And then of course, we're going to use the, uh, uh, the, 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 the vast knowledge of our own employees. We're talking about, let's say, changing our work process. We want to move toward zero defects in products and services we offer. Well, nobody knows more about a particular workstation than the person who actually performs work at that workstation. So if we're talking about getting better, talking about approaching total quality management, everything that we do is based upon quality we want to get uh, the input of those 
who actually perform the work. So we're going to change. We're going to look for best practices from other companies, but we're also going to tap into the vast knowledge that our employees have. We know that the most important thing is changing people. Changing people. All of us are a, a vast collection of attitudes and beliefs that have been assembled over a long period of time. And if you look at uh, uh, how do we become who we are, well, there are a lot of influences, certainly family, certainly friends, the part of the, part of the country where we were raised, the culture uh, we were raised within, uh, popular culture at the time. We, in fact, are who we were. And uh, by far, that's, that's mostly positive. Uh, but of course, all of us have a need to examine our attitudes and beliefs and question our attitudes and beliefs and, and, and make changes as necessary. But I want you to know that change is difficult. Change is very, very hard. We have a tendency to do what we did yesterday. We work yesterday is how we want to work today and how we want to work tomorrow. Well, if we're going to spread quality through the organization, we're going to have to change the way people think. Changing the way people think, it evolves over a long period of time. And we have to be patient. Learning is continuous. We talk about such things as continuous learning and self-development. That means that as an organization, we're always learning. We're always trying to get better. Who are we? What are we about? How can we do this process better? How can we be more efficient? How can we stay competitive? How can we stay in business so that those paychecks uh, uh, keep, uh, keep, uh, uh, keep being deposited in our accounts? Building trust, valuing and managing diversity. Trust is one of the basic foundations of business. We have to have trust. We have to have trust that our that we will uh, that our that our, our our customers will pay us for the products and services they receive. They have to trust us that our products will arrive at their door when they're supposed to arrive. No late deliveries. We uh, we deliver on time, and that our products are zero defects. No defects. They do what we say they're going to do. Always. They trust us for that. Building trust internally is also very important. We went on competition. People against each other within the company, the partners within each other in the company. Uh, that, that's not productive. We want people to be able to trust each other, to build trust in each other. They're going to do their job. The person next to me is going to do their job. And they're trusting you to do my job. And also diversity. E plupus unum says so on our money. We're a country of, 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 of people from all over the world, all ethnic and racial uh, backgrounds, all religious uh, backgrounds. America's strength, America's strength has always been in the diversity of its people, the diversity of our People. people bring in various suggestions and solutions to problems from different perspectives, and those perspectives are important. I've always said that uh, uh, it would be nice if we loved each other. It would be nice if we all liked each other. Uh, certainly it would, but at the very, very, very least, we have to treat each other with dignity and respect and value the wonderful diversity that we have in our organization. Okay, moving ahead. The question of total quality management is how do you define high quality? How do you define quality? Well, in every organization, every part, every division, Every unit, every work room, every production cell, each one of those production cells has to define quality, what quality means to them. The second step is to decompose work activities. 
What this means, we're going to look at every operation and understand the rationale and the need for performing each operation. The only way to do that is to decompose the work area. Take the work area apart. Everybody who performs work in that work area, what do you do? Why do you do it? What's the rationale? Is there a possibility to consolidate? Can we make work easier? Uh, can, uh, can we make work, can we have, can work, a, a, a flow are much better. And can we achieve better quality? Can we assure that we're going to produce products and services that have zero defects? The macro level, again, we're interested in benchmarking, we're interested in learning best practices in the marketplace, but we're also taking that, we'll take that information down to each work cell, each work department each work division, company as a whole. Why do we do the things we do? What's the rationale for our work process? And should it be changed? Can it be streamlined? Can we become better? And that occurs when we decompose. We look at, we, we look at work, we look at the work process, and we put each process in by itself. And then how does it relate to other processes? To do that effectively within the organization, we really have to have uh, the input from those who actually perform the work. We're going to establish standards. The standards might be zero defects. That's the standard. That's what we're looking for. Zero defects. We're dedicated to just-in-time delivery. Hmm. That means that we're interested in making sure that our deliveries arrive on time. When we say they're going to arrive on time, to avoid a stock out, <clears throat> arrive on time, prevent the stock out, arrive on time, prevent the stacking of our stuff back in the in, in, in our customers' uh, warehouse. We want to avoid that. So what's the standard? And we find that for businesses uh, uh, our size with a similar customer base, there's a company in St. Louis, let's say, they're not competitors of ours, they're in a different geographic area. When they started just in time, they had a hit rate of 94%. That's the standard we want to read. The decision that is made by management, there's a decision that is made uh, by, uh, uh, by a distribution, there's a decision that's made company-wide, we're going to set the standard for 94% out of the box. And then we're looking at increasing each year as we get familiar with just in time delivery. Maybe 94 is a stretch. The company in St. Louis said, well, we achieved 94% uh, percent, uh, on time, but it really, just in time, but it really was a stretch. So we're going to set, set standards. Everybody's going to know what those standards are. And we're going to collect data on a regular basis, on a daily basis. We're going to collect data. How are we doing? Are we achieving just in time? What's our hit rate? Or what about zero defects? Are we achieving zero defects? They just use those as an example. And we're going to evaluate progress. One other thing I want to point out. Research and experience will show. And I'm going to post a, a video, I'm going to refer you to a video uh, uh, where you'll get to actually meet uh, uh, Demings. Uh, Demings, of course, was one of the uh, uh, architects of, uh, of um, uh, uh, total quality management. I'm going to post a video for you so you can actually see Demings. He's going to talk about his, his, uh, his how to achieve or how he recommends that you achieve um, uh, total quality management. But uh, how quality improvement benefits the organization? We accept top-wide 
throughout the organization, top to bottom, we're going to focus on quality in everything we do. What are the benefits? Well, research and experience will show these are the benefits. Zero defects, just-in-time delivery, we increase productivity. Because we increase productivity, we lower costs. We increase customer satisfaction. We do what we say we're going to do. We deliver on time with zero defects. We do that and we will increase market share. Increase market share, we're going to increase earnings and profits. Research and experience shows. So uh, we've been over this a little bit before, but I just wanted to wrap it up. And uh, I want you to understand that when you go to your company, when you go to uh, your, whether for-profit or non-profit organization, this thing, to, this thing called quality is fundamental uh, to many organizations today, be they profit or non-profit, and I want you to be very, very familiar with the concepts. I will post another video online on YouTube, and in that video, you'll be able to see Dr. Demings and his 14 points. One other thing, this will be posted on YouTube. It'll be a Professor John at Augsburg, uh, BUS 440. And it'll be posted for you on YouTube. Well, gang, that's it for now. There'll be more information coming. I'll be posting a modified uh, syllabus for you. We're already get through this. Be patient, it'll be done. And I hope these takeaways that I tried to give you prove to be valuable. Thanks, folks.